Today we're going to see how to do good framing but also mosaics for the ZW ASI Air, ASI Air Pro or this one the ASI Air Plus. Hey guys, Kriv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to see how we can do framing with the ASI Air. And uh, in my previous video, which was my first live video with the ASI Air, while I was very impressed, uh, something I didn't think about was how can I do accurate framing? I was impressed with the search feature, selecting your target, it would slew, plate solve, like everything was really well done. But then like hard, if I want like slightly different framing than what it offers me, what can I do? First, one easy way to simply input uh, the coordinates manually. We do have another method for framing your image which relies on the preview mode. If you've taken an image um, already slewed somewhere and you're in the preview mode and here it's an image I took right now you can see it's a dark frame with uh, light actually filtering through from the sun hitting the telescope. But let's say you're looking at your preview frame like here and you're like oh there's more nebulosity in the top right corner let's try to go there. You can actually um, uh, touch and hold the, this point and then click on that go button and what will happen is that the ASI Air will uh, plate solve and actually go to that particular place. So you can use this function so it will keep reframing stuff uh, according to where you tell it to like you point and you tell it to go which is really really cool but unless you know what's around the object that you're ima in imaging um, you're basically stumbling around in the fog of war you don't know what's beyond the edges of your FOV until you actually go there uh, so it is good but it is still uh, limited and of course the way to actually use that later uh, rather than using a plan is to go into the uh, auto run here uh, section and there you can basically specify exactly uh, what you have in a plan but with uh, just one target at a time. So I have like a um, meridian flip and I can shut down the SIR at the end, I can, I can go home position uh, and then I can add my light frames in here as ever. Uh, so that would be the way to use like this kind of manual reframing uh, based on like touch and hold and then tell the mount to go to that specific position. Um, and, but still you're, you're really uh, stumbling around in the fog of war so it's probably better to be uh, prepared and to have your framing done ahead of time. But before we even go into the sequence planning and mosaics and that kind of stuff, if you use the previous method to uh, then do your session via an auto run, you might have forgotten to save the coordinates of your target somewhere. So now the night, the night after you want to take more frames, more light frames on the same object with exactly the same framing, but uh, you don't remember exactly what that framing was. And there is a way to achieve exactly the same framing based on the images that you record the night before or even prior than that. Um, if you had used a plan uh, which we'll go, we'll go into later in the video, the plan itself is saved so you don't need to go through this um, and your target with the framing is already saved as part of the plan. So now we're just doing if you've been using auto run and you have previous images available. So for that I can click for me it's the SD, I save my images on the SD card so I click on the SD icon otherwise you'd have the EMC icon and we can go inside image management and you can see I have images saved in the auto run from a sequence last night that I took of the Veil Nebula. So I can open that, I can open one of those images, uh, I'll put one of the earlier images because I know it's close to uh, Zenith. So let's say uh, this one. It's going to open the image. We can see exactly what that framing is. And to reproduce it, first I can use annotate here to see exactly what's in my image, which is something you can use in the preview mode as well. So it can be useful for um, your images when you're uh, framing via the touch and go. Uh, but here what we can do is we're going to go and say go to and it's going to solve the image and then go to that particular image. And here it is, go to succeeded, uh, plate solve succeeded, go to. And here it is, it is going to my target with exactly the same framing. And that's how you can keep the framing across nights or based on an image that you previously had taken. Okay, and let's, now let's go to the next method, which is more about pre-planning before your session. So there is a slightly more convenient way, which is using a third-party website called Telescopius, where you can actually export um, a framing or even a mosaic 
and put it inside the ASI Air. Okay, so the first step actually for a good framing and good mosaics is to know the orientation of your camera. And the best way really to know the orientation of your camera, um, including if you have a manual rotator or something like that, is for instance, you can slew towards your target and in the SI Air uh, software, you can solve the target and it will give you an angle. Uh, so for me, I would be like in the preview mode here. I would slew to my target. I would take an exposure and then I click the plate solve button here. It's a dark frame, so it's not going to solve anything. But once the plate solve is done, one of the parameters it will give out is an angle. Remember that angle because you're going to need it in Telescopius. So once you have that angle, let's go to Telescopius. Okay, so we are here in Telescopius.com. I'll put the link in the description below, but the first thing I recommend is creating an account so you can register your equipment because you're going to be reusing again and again this equipment for different targets. So to do that, you first create an account. It will prompt you to create an account, but you can see once I'm in my account, um, here it is, I can go to equipment and here I've already set up my uh, telescope and my camera and uh, my telescope, the most important parameter of the telescope is the focal length. You can see there's two numbers, one is, is minimum, one is maximum, and this is if you're using like a telescope whose focal length can change depending on the focus, like a schmidt cassegrain where the focus will actually move the primary mirror. But for me, I just set both values to 275 millimeters. This is the most important for framing. And I've also set uh, my camera, and the most important part of the camera is the sensor size here. And the sensor size, I had to look it up on the ZW website, which give, can give you the information if you have a ZW camera. Although, since this video is about ASI Air, you have a ZW camera. So uh, this is a bit of a useless disclaimer. Um, and once I have set that up, so the focal lengths and the sensor size of my camera, I'm ready to actually do framing. And a way to do that is you can simply search for your target. So I'm going to search for the Veil Nebula here. And here we are. And if I scroll down after a bit, I should see uh, the, here it is, um, the uh, the framing assistant, or I don't know how would you would call that. But you can see I can go and click the telescope. And if I click on Sharp Star here, it will set up the focal lengths in there. And by default, it was 400 millimeter, like before I clicked here, actually. But it's just like remembered what I've done before. And same thing in the camera. You click on your camera, and then it will actually uh, set up the sensor size. And something else you can do in here is set the angle that you had in the first step, uh, which is important, especially if you have like a, a non-square sensor, um, because it can really help with your framing. And uh, you can see how the angle will change things in terms of the framing, as, as you can see here. Uh, if I set it to around 270 degrees, it will help for my framing later on, uh, for my framing example later on. So I'm just going to set it that way. And uh, and then you can just like, you know, search the framing. And let's say I, I, I'm, I want to just like take this, part of the nebula. Okay, so I want to take this part of the nebula. It's not like the center, like I would get on the ZW uh, software. Um, so I just like set it like this. And what I can do is I can click on that little mosaic icon. And at the bottom, I have a copy CSV. So I copy CSV. And now I'm ready to go back to the ASI Air software. Okay, and once I'm back in the ASI Air software, I can click on preview here and I can go to plan. Once I'm in plan, I'll go into the sequences. I'll remove what I did as tests for this uh, video. And I will click the import button here. And now I can just like copy paste the information that I got from telescopius.com. So I click import. Uh, I, I cannot like just go back. I need to set a sequence. So I'll say like the usual stuff. I want uh, uh, 60 second exposures and I want to repeat that a lot of times. I'll say OK. And now I can click back. And you can see I have um, inform like the, uh, the, the information that I need for the target. I can click on the details now and I can edit the target name, uh, this kind of stuff. So this is great because now I have my, my, my framing set up. It's a bit clunky. <laughs> it's not as good as Nina in that respect, but it works. Um, and you can do exactly, use the, exactly the same method for uh, doing a mosaic. So I'm back in Telescopius right now 
And in the mosaic icon at the top here, you can see that you have a grid size. And here I think I can get away with just two frames. A very important part of this, and now you can see how this has changed. Now I am framing with um, two sensors, two, two, uh, two field of views uh, worth of sensor. There's a very important parameter in here, which is the uh, overlap. And ZW recommends an overlap of more than 15%. Um, I'm setting up to setting setting it to 20% just to be safe and you can see that now I can frame pretty much the whole nebula in those two frames and so that's a great mosaic to try with my uh, ZW Air Plus here and the exact same thing can be done once I'm satisfied with my mosaic and um, the angle of the camera is even more critical for mosaic than it is for a single frame. So make absolutely sure that that angle that we got at the first step is correct. But once that mosaic is set, again, you can click on copy CSV and we can go back to the ASI Air. Okay, and I am back in the ASI Air and I can click on import again. I'm gonna paste again, import. And again, I need to set up something for the sequence. Uh, apply this and now you can see I have pane 1, pane 2, but I also have center. So that would be actually three se sequences. I'm going to remove center, but now I have the two panes of my mosaic. And that's how, and I can go into details and rename them like Veil Nebula pane 1, Veil Nebula pane 2. Um, and that really will, that really helps um, make full use of the ASI Air. I kind of wish that they had something integrated within the ASI Air software and bonus points if it can be used offline uh, because then you can really be at a dark site with no network coverage and you forgot to do your framing but you can still do it because you're in the ASI Air. It's something that you can do in Nina even offline and uh, yeah I really wish they had something like that um, as well because this system works but it is definitely clunky. <laughs> I mean, it works again, but uh, yeah, there's there's more in terms of uh, user friendliness. Still, it's pretty cool to have this solution. Um, but yes, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. So uh, I hope that this was useful. If you're interested in astrophotography and all sorts of tips and tricks in the hobby equipment reviews, that kind of stuff, and you're not subscribed to the channel, first, welcome to the channel. You can go down below, click that subscribe button, little bell icon, like the video, leave a comment with better ways of doing framing with the ASI Air, for instance. Uh, but, you know, more importantly than that, thank you so much for watching uh, the video, as always. Uh, don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.